Welcome back to Get Fit Guy. This is your host, Kevin Dunn. Now, I have noticed that a few questions or topics repeatedly show up in my inbox. And one of these is elbow pain. So bearing in mind that I'm a coach and also in a crisis of personal identity, a philosophy student, and not a medical professional, and that even if I were, an email diagnosis would be very difficult Let's talk about this subject. What could this elbow pain be? And well, the most common things are either golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. What are the differences between these? Golfer's elbow and tennis elbow are very common conditions that cause pain around your elbow. Despite their names, the injuries are not confined only to golfers and tennis players and can affect anyone who performs repetitive arm, elbow, or wrist movements. Usually, they are both overuse injuries. So we might see them in beginners who are not yet used to the volume of that motion in a new sport they're trying out. But we also see it in seasoned athletes who might be practicing so much that their volume is exceeding the maximum recoverable dose. Understanding the differences between these two conditions, their causes, symptoms, and treatments can help you to recover. So a bit of definition, golfer's elbow is medically known as medial epicondylitis, and that's for all of you listeners that complain when I use Latin, thinking I'm doing it to make myself sound more intelligent. I'm not, I'm just doing it because that's what it's called. And medial epicondylitis is characterized by pain and inflammation on the inner side of the elbow, that is the closest side to your body when your arm is hanging naturally. It occurs where the tendons of the forearm muscles are attaching to the bony area, which is called the medial epicondyle of the elbow. This condition primarily affects the tendons involved in flexing the wrist and fingers. Flexing your fingers would be when you close your hand to make a fist. Golfer's elbow is normally caused by overuse, as I said, too much volume or repetitive stress, particularly activities that involve gripping, flexing the wrist, and swinging. So common activities would be in sports, things like golf, baseball, tennis, especially using a forehand stroke. Occupational activities would be things like carpentry, plumbing, and any other tasks that require repetitive wrist and forearm movements and recreationally you find it in things like gardening and even painting believe it or not Um, now symptoms of golfer's elbows include as i said you've got pain and tenderness on the inner side of the elbow your elbow might feel stiff especially in the morning and you might have some weakness in your hand and wrist and numbness or tingling that radiates to the fingers especially the ring finger and the little finger Diagnosis of this usually involves a physical examination, which is why I can't possibly say if someone has that condition via an email. In a physical exam, the doctor will check for the pain and tenderness around the elbow, looking for the exact location. In many cases, they'll order some imaging like x-rays or an MRI that they could use not just to confirm their suspicions, but to rule out any other conditions. So that's golfer's elbow. What about tennis elbow? Well, tennis elbow is known as lateral epicondylitis, and it involves pain and inflammation on the outer side of your elbow, which is the side furthest away from your body when your arm is hanging naturally by your side. This is where the tendons of the forearm are attaching to the lateral epicondyle. This condition primarily affects the tendons that don't flex your fingers but that extend them. And this is where you would be opening your hand out from a fist into like a flat open hand. Similar to golfer's elbow, tennis elbow results from overuse and repetitive motion. In sports, tennis, especially backhand stroke, squash and things like weightlifting, occupational activities, again, things like painting, using screwdrivers and hammers, or even things like repetitive typing on a keyboard or using a computer mouse. Recreational activities, again, you'd be looking at things like gardening, playing musical instruments, and also knitting. 
So main symptoms of this are, again, you've got pain and tenderness, but this time it's on the outer side of your elbow. That pain does radiate into your forearm and wrist. You might have weakness in your hand and wrist and difficulty with activities like shaking hands, gripping objects, or turning a doorknob, opening a jam jar, that kind of thing. Diagnosis, again, would involve a physical examination, checking for the location of your pain and tenderness, things like x-rays or MRIs to rule out other conditions or confirm diagnosis. So again, to recap, location of the pain is the main difference here. In golfer's elbow, the pain is on the inside. In tennis elbow, the pain is on the outside. The golfer's elbow affects the attachments to the medial epicondyle, which is primarily for flexing your fingers. And tennis elbow involves the tendons attached to the lateral epicondyle, which is primarily the tendons involved in extending your fingers. Golfer's elbow is any repetitive wrist flexion and gripping movements. Tennis elbow is repetitive wrist extension and also gripping movements. Uh, the pain pattern in both of them radiates down the arm to the wrist and fingers, although in golfer's elbow, we're seeing it radiate down the inner side of your forearm. Tennis elbow radiates down the outside. What about treatment and management of this? Well, the first thing is you have to rest. For both conditions, the first line of treatment involves resting and avoiding things that exacerbate the symptoms. Modifying techniques in your sport or your occupational activities can prevent further strain on the tendons. I can't even begin to tell you the number of times I've been in a gym and seen recreational athletes walking about like Robocop with all of these compression sleeves and braces and supports because they have pain. If you need to wear all of this stuff just to go to a CrossFit class or play squash with your friends, you need to have a chat with yourself. It might be annoying that you can't see your friends and play golf for a couple of weeks, but trust me, once tendon issues set in, they become chronic and are a nightmare to get rid of. You have to rest. The next thing is physical therapy. This can play a crucial role in recovery because a good therapist can have an assessment of any movement problems you've got. They can also design a specific exercise program to strengthen the forearm muscles and improve your flexibility. They can assess your movement, make sure there's no mechanical problems going forwards and fix those issues. We've got medications that you might be given. So NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen can help reduce pain and inflammation. In some cases, doctors might recommend corticosteroid injections for severe pain. I've had multiple of those myself. Don't recommend because when the pain goes away, you think that you're all better, right? So I had a tear down the middle of my patellar tendon. I had an injection into that tendon. A few days later, all my pain was gone. And then I ended up making the injury much, much worse and needed surgery. So not sure about those really. Um, and also having repeated injections um, can really damage the tendons because it makes them more brittle. Again, we've got, like I said before, using braces and supports, which can alleviate symptoms by reducing stress on the tendons. I would much rather people just went to rest um, because you're not fixing any underlying problems, right? You don't need to put a brace on to go play a recreational game. You just need to have a rest. Um, and then finally, you've got advanced treatments, which are really just surgical interventions. Usually these are avoidable if, hmm, you take a rest. So... Um, what else have we got? Preventative measures, proper technique is important, and so is proper equipment. Um, ensure that your equipment, such as you know golf clubs or tennis rackets, are appropriate for your skill and strength level. It can be super tempting to go out and buy the same equipment that your favorite professional athlete uses, but this equipment might be totally inappropriate for you. Uh, regularly performing exercises to strengthen the forearm muscles and improve flexibility can help you. Warming yourself up before you engage in repetitive activities is also beneficial. And you may have noticed that I generally don't give out things like program advice or here's the best warm-up to do, and that's because the needs of the many are not the needs of the one. I've always believed in an individual approach, so absolutely think that you should go and see someone that could give you a program tailored to your own needs, or you could contact me. Uh, 
I've only ever had in two years two people contact me about training, which honestly is quite a surprise. Uh, one of them, I actually lost his email in my inbox after he had requested we do a Zoom call. Uh, so if you're listening, I'm sorry. Um, and the other one was a call where he was telling me about how the training was going to be going. That's not how it works. You don't call the doctor up and tell them what medication they're going to prescribe. So, yeah, if you need any help with training, contact me or go see a professional. Uh, you could also make ergonomic adjustments. So these are things you could do using different tools or learning better posture to reduce the strain on your forearms and muscles and tendons. If you're using a computer, there's all sorts of ergonomic tools and little gadgets that you can have to reduce the strain on your forearms. And yeah, to conclude this week's episode, golfer's elbow and tennis elbow are conditions that come usually from repetitive strain on the tendons around the elbow, albeit they affect different areas and muscles. While their symptoms and causes share uh, similarities, there are distinctions which are in the location of the pain and the specific tendons involved. Effective management of both conditions involves rest, physical therapy, proper technique, and in some cases, medical interventions such as medication or surgical treatment. If you understand the differences between these things and take preventative measures, you can reduce your risk of developing a much more painful and chronic condition and be able to maintain an active lifestyle and play the sports you love. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, email me on getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Get Fit Guy is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchins, Brandon Getches, Davina Tomlin, and me. If you have a question for me, you could also voicemail me at 510-353-3104. Email me, like I said, getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. For more information, visit quickanddirtytips.com or check out the show notes, which will be in your podcast app. Mm-hmm.